everybody, I'm Matthew Leonard, and I am joined today at the St. Paul Center by a couple of guys. One of them you might recognize, Mike Aquilina, who is renowned church father's expert, has written a bunch of books, and joined me in a lot of these videos, too. And he is joined by Mark Sullivan, who is a respected Catholic journalist. And the two of them have joined forces, kind of like the Wonder Twins, and they have written <laughs> a new book. And I want to tell you about it. In fact, I'm going to let them tell you about it. Here it is. St. Monica and the Power of Persistent Prayer. So, gentlemen, let's start with this. Your guys, your two guys, in case people didn't realize this, and you wrote a book about a female saint who is invoked by mothers all over the world. So why did you guys pick St. Monica? How did this happen? We have great mothers, <laughs> and, uh, and, and they remind us a lot of St. Monica. You know, she, she is kind of the historical prodigy. She's the model for motherhood, and she shows people especially how to model adult children. Mark and I are adult children. We, we've never quite grown up, and like I said, we've had, we've had really good mothers. Mark, Mark and I are, by the way, yeah, uncle related. and nephew. Uh, I don't think anyone would see the family resemblance. <laughs> and so, so um, my sister is his mother. And uh, my mother is his grandmother. And we've grown up with these great models. So we can see the relevance of St. Monica as a model for mo modern mothers. And we've seen it in our life in some common experiences we, we have. And we show this relevance in the course of the book. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about St. Monica herself. Who was she? The, the well, mother of St. Augustine, one of the most influential people um, ever to walk the face of the earth. Um, she was born in North Africa um, to, um, I guess, very middle-class parents. They had um, servants and things, but generally they um, were on the, the poor side of things. Um, she had a strict upbringing. She was um, brought up more by a, a maid servant than, um, than her parents, who were very strict, wouldn't let her um, drink water except at, at meals. Um, and uh, yeah, she married um, a man who was a pagan. Um, and not, not, not the greatest guy in the world. Um, so she had a, a difficult marriage. Um, what is it that makes her special in relation to other mothers, either of her time or just in general? <laughs> you know, that's an easy one. If you look at St. Monica, uh, she, well, let me back up for a second. Every parent has this moment when the child is, um, is, is just very small, when you have this epiphany, when you realize that your child is one of the most brilliant human beings <laughs> ever to walk the face of the earth. I thought that was right at pregnancy. It was so you find out that this is going to be the one. Yeah, and, and you're just imagining your, your, your kid already swinging for the fences, or, right. or, or you, you imagine your kid arguing cases before the Supreme Court. Uh, well, well, St. Monica must have had those thoughts, only she was right. Yeah, exactly. St. Augustine is one of the maybe top five or top ten most influential human beings ever to walk the face of the earth. She's the one who mothered him into adulthood. So it's worth at least looking at to, to, to determine what she did to be such a successful mother. Now, the other thing is that St. Augustine kind of followed his father in being a cad. And he didn't live a particularly good young adulthood. So St. Monica was someone who continued to mother an adult child who has full freedom through a period like that. Well, so every day here at the St. Paul Center, and, and many of the people who are watching this now, our donors will send in prayer requests. Yeah. And it's unusual for us to have a day where someone doesn't pray for their children who have left the faith. They want them to come back, and so we pray for this constantly. What is it in particular that she did that helped accomplish this in Augustine, who went off the rails, I mean, way off the rails in a lot of ways? People don't realize how bad he was for a long time. So what did she do? I think the, the key thing is she grew in holiness herself, and is he became, or was worse, she had to pray more, mm -hmm. and it sort of raised her level of holiness that if maybe he wasn't so bad, she wouldn't have had to, to pray so much and be better herself. So she was getting holier and holier. Um, Augustine had this better example of a holier and holier mom. So when he did finally come back, sort of they were at a much higher plane than if they had stopped. Sort of like an exponential interest of, um, of how it worked. The power of persistent prayer. Yeah. Right? We say that. <laughs> <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of advantages or disadvantages? 
did she have? That's a good question. You know, you're talking about a woman with a brilliant son who was at the top of his academic field in the world at that time. He held the chair in rhetoric in the city of Milan, which was the administrative capital of the empire at the court of the emperor. So he had reached the top of his field, and here was a woman who couldn't read. Wow. So she had to witness to the most brilliant man on earth, maybe, um, and witness the Christian faith to him. So she, she had some pretty serious obstacles there, but she overcame those through prayer. What did she do? She went to Mass every day. She went to Mass twice a day, because it was the only way she could encounter the Word of God. She could hear it proclaimed. She would go to every funeral that was, funeral Mass that was offered in her parish just so that she could hear the Word of God proclaimed and preached again and again. She knew that that was her chance. That was her opportunity to grow closer to our Lord and to, to bring her, her son along, along with her, even if he wasn't accompanying her to church. You know, she brought him along in her prayer. Now, she also followed him around yeah. physically, too. Tell us a little bit about that. I was going to say, and, and besides that, she also knew how to network, and, and her being, being able to follow him, that, um, you know, they didn't have the, the form of communication that we have now. Um, so if she was going to find him in Rome, how would she, you know, even locate him in this, this big city? So I think through the, the church and through networking people that she knew coming back, she was able to, you know, find that he was, you know, here in Rome, but he had left to go to, to Milan. Um, and she took advantage of that networking throughout her life, you know, when she was struggling with Augustine, she didn't keep it all on herself, but, you know, she went to other priests, um, that were more educated than her that could, you know, to, um, to meet him on his intellectual level and to try to explain things to him. Did, you know, we, we know that St. Ambrose had a big impact on Augustine, too. Oh, yeah. Did Monica have contact with Ambrose that we know of? Did they have a relationship at all? Well, she was the one who brought Augustine and Ambrose together, essentially. She, she, when she, she traveled from North Africa to Rome to Milan, as Mark said, to, to kind of follow her son. And you have to understand, travel at that time entailed great risks. A lot of people died at sea just because you're living in close quarters, it's, it's risky business, you're not eating the greatest food, and the conditions aren't that sanitary. There were no passenger ships in this time, hmm. okay? So you're, you're, you're traveling with the cargo. Um, she, un she undertook great hardships just to stay close to her son. And that's one of the lessons we try to bring out. Stay close to your children. Now today we have advantages. We can, we can text, we can email, we can Skype. We can stay close in a lot of different ways. She took the advantages she had at that time, which was some difficult travel. But she, she, um, she, went, she ended up in, in Milan. She took Ambrose as a spiritual director, the archbishop. Um, she, she went to him, and, uh, and she recognized that here was a man who was as brilliant as her son in many different ways. He had been governor of Milan, of the administrative capital, before he became a priest, before he became a Christian. So she recognized him as someone who could deal with her son, and she created opportunities for them to get together. And she kind of tried to mother her son into uh, Ambrose's presence. And uh, her son did attend Ambrose's uh, liturgies, listened to him preach, and was very much moved by him. He was even intimidated by him, which was interesting uh, for Augustine, because he was not a man easily intimidated. But I think he recognized holiness where he saw it, and he was attracted by it. I would have to imagine that Monica had quite a relationship with Our Lady, because she had been drawing upon that relationship as she was trying to draw her son back to the faith as well. And the day that we're filming this happens to be the Feast of the Visitation, and so I would encourage mothers out there to invoke Our Lady in, in helping bring back your children, maybe who have left the faith, or spouses, or children, or uh, friends, or whomever might be in your life. Let's close by, you know, just wrap this up by saying, how can we relate then? So we know we can pray, we should pray like St. Monica does. Anything else that we can relate to her or you can tell other people that you can relate to her by, maybe something you want to bring out from the book. I have a wonderful pastor in my parish, and, and he often says that, that Christian parenting is not so much talking at your kids about God, but talking to God about your kids. Mm -hmm. Monica models that better than anyone else, because we're all activists today. And we all want to meddle in the lives of, of everyone, you know, and change people. And we can't change people. But God can give people the opportunities for change and give them the power to change. And Monica shows us how to pursue that course of action and, and succeed in it. It might take some time. Because what we learn in the process is that 
our children, our adult children, are not the only projects here. That's right. We are the project. That's exactly right. And God right. is working on us. That's right. And to Mark's point, you, you earlier you said, you know, she grew in holiness, which is right. what helped Augustine come into the church. And really, that's what's incumbent upon every one of yeah. us every day. So if you want to grow in holiness, and I, I suggest, A, you take a look at this book, and you can find this uh, title at salvationhistory.com and our bookstore. And engage prayer, because prayer is the path to perfection. It's the path to God. And St. Monica is certainly a fantastic example for us to emulate. Gentlemen, thank you very much. God bless both of you. And I look forward to having you back in here sometime soon when you write the next book. <laughs> God bless you guys.